Jim Lannon was born in Grand Junction, Colorado, and when he graduated from high school, he was awarded a scholarship to the University of Denver. He wanted to study paleontology, but wound up in broadcast. He studied under Noel Jordan at DU. They said, you've got to go take this television course or you can't graduate. Oh God, I thought television, what a mess. And I walked in that little studio that they had built. 30 seconds later, I was hooked. That was all she wrote. I knew that was for me. I was just bowled over by it, just went crazy. And they put me on camera and it was like I was born with one in my hand. It, we just, one of those things that clicked and away we went. Lannon was a big part of the growth and development of TV in Denver. He directed a series of remote broadcasts that were first in the Denver TV market. Among the programs were the first live Denver Symphony Orchestra telecast, the first videotape of a heart transplant, film coverage of NORAD, and the first time TV cameras were allowed in the Denver FBI office. Jim received a thank you note from J. Edgar Hoover. There's nothing more exhilarating than a live show, especially in those days when the equipment was cumbersome, unwieldy, and, and sometimes alarmingly <laughs> unreliable. So it was a crap shoot. You never knew what was going to happen. And the suspense was <laughs> incredible, but it was more fun than the law allows, I'm telling you. It was incredible fun, tremendous pressure, but great fun. It was a real baptism of fire, I'm telling you. Wow, you learn quickly. My first exposure to anything very important was directing uh, some of the feeds for the Un-American Activities Committee, the Senate was holding here in town. And that was an eye opener to uh, direct some of that stuff because it was on the, off the cuff, you know, you know, just like reality TV, only it was not scripted. Lannon and Gene Amel combined to produce a series of live remotes for a show named Panorama that aired weekly on KLZ TV. Panorama, a contribution to creative television. It was an experiment, that's all. To get the station involved in the community and the community involved in, in television, we sent about showing life in Denver. Manufacturing, artistic, political, religious, everything we could think of. It uh, soon became the number one show in its time slot. And it was an adventure, of course. Live television, remote. We wanted everything live. And only when it was impossible to do so would we resort to tape or film. Uh, Amor was a master at getting people to relax and, and talk naturally on the air. He was just wonderful. He was one of them talking to them as I'm talking to you now. And that was the appeal. And he was a very good writer, an excellent writer. In 1957, they did what had not been done before in Denver television. Their work on Panorama won a national Peabody Award for KLZ-TV, the first Denver area station to be honored in the 20-year history of the awards. The Peabody Award is broadcast's most coveted honor, comparable to journalism's Pulitzer Prize. It was uh, done at Laredon Hall, which is a rehabilitation center for uh, uh, mentally impaired children. And oh boy, it was a great, wonderful show, but I remember one section where this old man was teaching a kid how to put pegs in a hole or whatever, and the kid does it right, and the old guy picks him and said, that a boy, that a boy, and it was a very moving thing. The only thing is that the old man thought it was a rehearsal, didn't realize it was on the air. I cannot tell you the feeling I had when we, when we got that award, oh brother, it's the, the highest you can get in broadcasting and uh, Gene and I would just look at each other and say, how did we do this, what, what happened? <laughs> Given the artistic freedom that we had, that we, we were allowed 
you can produce very good quality stuff. The grind of doing over 200 live programs took its toll for both Lannan and Emil. The grind was too much. I had a regular directing schedule in addition to that. And, you know, like I said, we would start writing at 12 midnight and then go on till three or four in the morning. And then I had to take another shift. And so did Gene, he had to get to his radio station. Oh boy, you don't realize the incredible pressures until you get into the situation. I know it sounds like drudgery, but it wasn't. It was more fun than you can imagine. And I think I'm blessed to have gone through it. The excitement producing live programs provided a thrill for Lannan. He felt the spontaneity and creativity might be lost with new production techniques. You don't face things like that with the tape and the pre-set, all that anymore. There's no fun. There's no adventure. There's no danger. I wouldn't even recognize any of the equipment anymore. I just know I wouldn't. Too used to working with dinosaurs. <laughs> After 27 years at KLZ TV Channel 7, would Jim Lannan like to try it again? I remember having lunch with Emil long, you know, a couple of years after I left. And we'd sit there and talk, and I miss it terribly the way it used to be. It's not the same business, not at all. The broadcast professionals of Colorado welcomed Jim Lannan into the 2011 BPC Hall of Fame.